So what is this hadith? This is the final hadith, and then we're going to end this here, okay? Uh, narrated by Abu Huraira that once he was in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi <laughs> carrying a water pot for his uh, ablution, is that how you said ablution? So washing basically yourself and for cleaning his private parts. So you were trying to clean your genitals, you had water with you, right? While he was following him carrying it. Okay, so wait, so this guy was following the Muhammad, was Muhammad and they had water with them. And they were going to go to take a dump and they were bringing water with them so that they could wash themselves after they take it, wash their private parts when they take a dump. Okay. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, who is this? He said, what? This means, he, who is this? He said, I am Abu Huraira. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, bring me stones in order to clean my private part. Okay. This doesn't make any sense, guys. Have you ever cleaned yourself? Imagine like taking a dump and you just pooped basically, okay? You pooped and you need to wipe yourself. And then you ask for stones? I mean, how does that even feel like? I'm just, I'm trying to imagine rubbing stones on your butt after you just take it, took a dump. That could not feel very good. Like, I think, I don't understand. That's really, ah, like, thank you shaitan for toilet paper is, is, is are we are we is is toilet paper a, sh a shaitanic thing because thank you um matthew is saying and you know i found it funny because we have teen cats in australia as well thank you so much matthew for the 10 10 australia matthew you're also doing so many super chats two generous guys thank you so much but again, do not do this many super chats if you are, unless you're rich, okay? Matteo, I hope you're rich because you're doing too many super chats. I really appreciate that though, okay? But if you're not rich, don't do so many super chats. Thank you so much for the support, Matteo. But that's funny. Uh, three stones. Yeah, Sohan is confirming three stones. The Jewish Talmud speaks of stones also. Yeah, that's where they get it from. Bring me stones in order to clean my private parts. This is, guys, this is Muhammad speaking, okay? Muhammad is like, give me, hey, I'm taking a dump. Give me some stones uh, so I could wipe my ass. So this is Hadith talking about Muhammad's poop, okay? This is authentic Islamic scripture talking about the prophet of Islam wiping his ass with stones. You're welcome. Um, and oh, okay, but he continues. Do not bring me any bones or animal dung. Why would anybody bring you animal dung? Do do people wipe their butt to clean themselves from poop with other poop? Is I, <laughs> okay, guys. Can somebody? I don't understand this. I have to check. Yeah. Am I really like how does this work? Like, hey, bring me some stones to wipe my ass, but do not bring me any bones and do not bring me animal poop. Do not make me wipe my poop with animal poop. Is that is that <laughs> what like people are okay? Uh whipping bum with so what the f yeah, exactly. People are like <laughs> Maybe dried, yeah, maybe dried poop. But imagine wiping your butt with dried poop. <laughs> Kenny is like, I'm dying here laughing. <laughs> Kill fire with fire, wipe, wipe poop with poop. Yeah, wiping poop with poop. Muhammad doesn't like to wipe his poop with other poop. I don't know, okay. But that's not because he found it ironic to wipe poop with poop, okay? That was not the issue. He has a very specific reason for why he didn't want to wipe his poop with poop, okay? Abu Huraira went on narrating, and so I brought some stones, <laughs> carrying them in the corner of my robe till I put them by his side and went away. So the Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, the messenger of Allah, was taking a dump, and this Abu Hur the father of kittens, took stones in his... In his what? In the corner of his robe. He carried them in the corner of his robe. And he, while Muhammad was taking a dump, he just left the stones next to the Prophet of Allah, the messenger, the seal of the prophets, while taking a dump, was some handed some stones to him by the father of kittens. 
and make sure that it wasn't animal poop, okay? Dried animal poop, okay? Only in Islam, guys. Only in Islam. <laughs> okay. When he finished, okay, when Muhammad finished pooping, I walked with him and asked, what about the bone and the animal dog? <laughs> so he was, okay, so like, Abu, the father of kittens was wondering why the seal of the prophets did not want to wipe his butt with bone and animal dog. So that was in the mind of the father of kittens, okay? Guys, these are serious, these are serious issues, okay? Do not, like, do, don't, I, I hope none of you is laughing, okay? This is some serious stuff, okay? As This is the religion, this is the seal of the prophets teaching you the most important thing that this is life, okay? He said, okay, did Muhammad respond? Like, Muhammad is telling you why he didn't want animal dung or bone, okay? Dear, guys, this is the wisdom in Islamic teaching. This is the reason why he, Muhammad told you not to wipe your butt with animal bones or animal poop, okay? Because they are food of jinns! Because the jinns eat them! You have to leave them the food if you wipe your butt with animal bones and animal poop. What would the jinns eat? That's their food! Don't wipe your ass with their food! How inconsiderate can you be? They can't eat. They can eat animal poop when you made it unclean when it, with human poop. <laughs> I can't go on. I guess this is the reason. This is the wisdom of the prophet. They are of the food of the jinns. How sweet and kind of the prophet to be considerate of jinns. Of jinns who are going around and looking for animal dung and bones to eat. And you're like, yeah, don't, yeah, can you not touch that? Can you be like, do you not care for the jinns? That's their food. This is, guys, the, okay, guys, I'm not joking. This is like, here's a reference, okay? And go, if you think this is not part of Islam, go look what Sahih Bukhari is. Go look at, this is Islamic canon, okay? This is the highest authority of Islamic teaching in Islam, second only to the Quran itself. This is mainstream Islam. This is as Islamic as things get. This is mainstream Sunni Islam. This is all four schools of Islam, uh, four schools of Islam, Sunni Islam, consider this as Islamic canon. Anybody who denies this has thrown out 90% of Islam. Anybody who wants to deny Hadith is throwing away four of the five pillars of Islam. Four of the five pillars of Islam do not come from the Quran. They come from the Hadith. You, Islam would be unrecognizable without Hadith. And this is the highest, most authentic source of Islamic Hadith. Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And if you don't believe me, just go look this up. Here's all the references is here for you. This is as Islamic as Islam gets. And they're telling you not to wipe your ass with animal bones and animal poop because demons, that's demon food. And you need to let the demons eat that. Do not taint their food with human poop. Do not taint animal poop with human poop so that the jinns could eat it. This is Islam, guys. <laughs> so it's saying, have considerate of Muhammad caring for jinns. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, why are you putting that image in my head? Um, maybe jinns are plants. Uh, my guess is that is this guy didn't understand the K and just blamed it on the jinns. Yeah, let's continue. They are food. They are of the food of jinns. They, they, the, the, by the way, guys, this whole thing, this Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari, this Hadith, Hadith is what a lot of Muslims just recently got offended because they're like, ah, Hadith is so sacred to us. We love the Hadith. Do not disrespect the Hadith. Go educate yourself about the Hadith before you use it in your lingerie show, Rayana. Oh, we're all so butthurt. Here, guys, I'm helping you educate yourself about the Hadith. This is what they what you don't want 
them to disrespect. Do not disrespect the hadith. You don't have to disrespect the hadith. The hadith disrespects itself. They're like, oh, go educate yourself. Yeah, go educate yourself about the hadith. So you know that the hadith does not help disrespecting. It does that job itself, okay? Yeah. The, de the delegate, oh, wait. The delegate of the jinns of this, the city of Nazibin came to me. I don't know what this is. And how nice those jinns were and asked me for the remains of the human food. Okay, so another thing that the jinns eat is the remaining of your food. I invoked Allah for them that they would never pass by a bone or animal dung, but find food on them. Oh, wait, so basically Muhammad did them a favor and asked Allah to make them... Oh, okay, so before they were like, the jinns were starving. They're like, oh, can you please not finish that? I'm going to eat that. Those are basically your annoying friends that you go to a restaurant with and you're eating your food and they keep telling you, are you going to finish that? That's basically jinns. Jinns were doing that to Muhammad. So Muhammad was so annoyed with jinns coming to him and keep saying like, hey, are you going to finish that? Are you going to finish that? So you're like, man, it's annoying. These jinns are so hungry all the time. I know they ask me for my food. So you're like, Allah, can you make, can you just basically make bones and animal dung food for the jinn and make it like yummy to them? And Allah was like, okay, fine. So basically Muhammad invoked Allah to do this for them because, yeah, because he was basically annoyed by the jinns. Is that, is that how you guys read it? That's how I'm reading it.